can't afford to lose to a team with a standard. And a team that is going to be at the Americas RMR that Odic failed to make. They got to two and one and just couldn't find their third win. Lost a cold zero in the bunch. But here on Nuke, we start off and Tog's already pressured at ramp, taken out by Sus, but the rotate from Madios is timely. A nice quick headshot, but he's still probing for more. He doesn't have backup coming so quickly, but there is a player that has rotated towards that lower side. It is not exactly safe territory. Wildcard actually just pushing the boundaries, even finding a following frag. Brings it back to the three on three, but that's where Nighty comes into play. Oh, Nighty's doubled up. Nighty and Matios for this team have been such a consistent two-man force across, well, honestly, opposite ends of the bomb site. And that's sort of what Audic really relies on as they pick up the pistol round as well. Because generally, it feels like they've actually set Nighty and Dogs up to be these anchors on either side of the map and then used it to be very mobile with Woody and KS Locks, right? And it does feel like it's a bit of a spiritual succession to what Woody used to do with Turtle once upon a time. Sure. I know we both really enjoyed. KS Locks a little bit more passive on the CT side, similar style of rotating and all that stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that ends up being the case over here as well, or whether they've had some change-ups and some other plans. Yeah, I mean, Nighty is like this aggressive kind of rifler. If there's going to be someone that finds aggression in the mid-round, this is the guy that you look to. I mean, he's got big muscles, and he likes to flex them in the circle. It's true. Intimidating oh. man. Yeah, and to play against that. And, and so, rightfully, when we got the interview with Stanislaw, he knows not to underestimate a Brazilian foe. You know, Odic may not be the creme de crop within the Brazilian scene. They, they've struggled domestically against teams like the Red Canids, for example. But that's also... One of what uh, one of the best of what Brazil is kind of offering. Yeah. Like, they'll lose to Pain as well, another team that we you know, have a lot of promise for. And at the end of the day, they are absolutely grinders, right? And everyone is in South America, but feels like Audic amongst the most of them because they make it deep enough to not get eliminated early and not play too many matches. But it also feels like they never get the respite of, oh, we're going to take two weeks off because we qualified for a LAN, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's none of that. Audic are amongst the hardest working players in, in terms of just number of officials played. And while Wildcard also has actually quite a few reps in, right? Any team that's playing domestically will. It's not the same as, hey, when we get to the top, we're playing up against Spain, we're playing up against Red Canids, like you mentioned, we're playing up against Flux. So it's very different to Wildcard's case where you don't really get to compete with Liquid and Complexity. Yeah, for the top of your scenes, like the exposure to them, right? You, you have limited, I guess, reps against teams that will have more of these international opportunities. That's, that's actually uh, something I hadn't even really considered, but I mean, with Otic, hustling as much as they have yeah and to, for them to already find these opening rounds and, and do so fairly unthreatened Valka will have a lot of lot to answer for now that they're on rifles I think already taking a lot of damage in the opening bout towards outside and they do clear the close angle even specifically flashed for set up for success oh. and he'll find even more outside lovely absolutely lovely there was a chance for Nighty to come through and ask for a flashbang peek out behind it, but it just can't be put together. JBA and Susp have pretty much secured this round for Wildcard. And at this point, it's all a matter of finding that one last M4 and putting it to bed. Dogs will put up a fight and makes it two, so at least some damage being dealt and he's keeping things honest, but that's all he can do. Yeah, I mean, really nicely done there from, from Wildcard, not to get caught out by this forward play. I, I think... You know, if you're thinking about it from the perspective of Audic, they want to set that precedent early that nothing is going to be given to you for free. Outside control, you throw all these smokes down, we will play ahead of it, we will try and challenge you. And just a good attention to detail here for a wild card to, to flash those angles and minimize risk while, while also still showing that presence. Not exactly a clean buy here for Audic either. Just after they lose the first gun round, we see KS locks on a 5-7 and MP9 out for Matios as well. Wildcard will still take a cautious step. For them, it's about repelling the potential aggression of Odic. 90 is about to pose that very aggression and Sonic has anticipated it perfectly. Last thing you want is Odic feeling real confident, getting a stride to them and taking all of these risks. I mean, you see Wildcard just 
Nice and slow on their approach, never giving info away for free. Otic have to face check these angles, and where they're facing, they're finding bullets. It's another great trade here for Wildcard. And they're just going to collapse on the A-bomb site. I mean, with how many players they, they killed in the transition to towards main, the site is ripe for the picking. And I'm very curious to see whether or not uh, this ends up being the continued five men together. Let's maybe at most leave one player behind and just try and play off of each other's setup that Wildcard have shown us so far. It's early days, but if this is what the gun rounds are going to look like, well, at the very least, it's it's very straightforward Counter-Strike to play with the stand-in, and it also actually leans into what was classically considered one of Stanislaw's strengths, which is mid-round calling and making individual lurking plays based off of reads. Now, if you're playing all together, especially on a map like Nuke, you don't even have to make the play yourself. You can just call for it for someone else as well. And I think that actually leads into the strengths of JBA very effectively. Mm. All right, so it's, it's a very interesting thing to just keep an eye out for wildcard and see how exactly they want to make this work. The kind of best case scenario you could, I mean, best thing you could really ask for here at the start of your T side, you find an immediate success. You've set a, a nice, comfortable amount of control towards outside. And when you have gone there, you've been there in heavy numbers. You know, you saw the reaction from Odic. They clear lobby. They don't find the lurker. They, they, they struggle to get anything, I guess, back for losing all this long control. And so, from Stanislaw's perspective, you know, uh, there's going to have to be some respect put on uh, the, the wild card name, so to speak. Otic are maybe going to taper back slightly or, or seed a bit more space and play for where wild card are headed as opposed to where they are currently. But that's the kind of versatility or I guess the freedom you want as an in-game leader to, to know you have options and that Otic are the ones having to plug up the, the holes in the ship. I just love that they're so dead silent in everything that they're doing. You know, yeah. not even feigning steps or, or, or anything. Otic are really going to be stressed on information. Wildcard aren't giving anything away for free. And especially when you've already been punished that early on into the game for going aggressive, right? And it might not feel like much, but are your players going to be as willing to do the same four rounds from now? Mm -hmm. When you always feel like you don't know what's going on, when you always feel like, well, we did get aggressive and that didn't work, I don't, I don't know, maybe I just want to hold my sight. There is that legitimate fear that creeps in. Let's not forget, I mean, it's not just about international land for Odic. I mean, for players like Chaos Locks, this is his first international land ever. This is his second land ever, according to Liquipedia. And that includes, like, locals. His first land was a couple of months ago, also with Odic. Yeah, we're not talking about going to your local internet cafe and yeah. just playing a few games where there are stakes. Yeah, I guess foreign waters in more way than more ways than one for Chaos Locks. And everyone around him is pretty bedroom, right? Like the, these guys have been on the grind for a while. I've even Togs over in Sharks. Yep, has had his own shots, maybe not with Odic, sure, but been there. For regardless, so, yeah. Let's see whether or not Wildcard can continue their success. Matios will be saving this AK-47 as we move forward. And it will be the lead found by the North American side for the first time. And for, for both of these squads, a lot of the, the reliance is going to come off of how active and how successful the Riflers are. You know, yes. for them, they don't want to put too much responsibility on, on the stand-in and friend on the side of wildcard. Sure, they, they would much rather have, you know, their, their full team, but the circumstances are, are how they are. And, you know, for, for Otic, it's not as though we look at Woody as being this guy that, you know, continually creates opportunities for his other riflers. He is a, a fairly sedentary AWPer. Doesn't take a, a huge amount of risk. And it's interesting because Woody's actually tried to make his playstyle a little bit more conducive to enabling the rifles by being aggressive, but that never comes in the AWP. And it's understandable, right? He might not have confidence in himself for that very same role, but it also means that there's a big disparity in playstyle when he has the AWP compared to when he doesn't. So Chaos Locks doesn't feel as unlocked in that situation. So let's see whether or not there's other compensation, right? Maybe someone else has assigned that task to help out, go aggressive, let Chaos Locks be the one to trade. Let that young talent come out. I always find it so curious, though. You know, the, the Brazilian scene have 
have put out so many orping in-game leaders, and yet I think few have tried to mirror what Kadian did with like a heroic, for example. But yeah, that's I think what Woody tries to do. Much faster here oh from Wildcard, God, and I killed. said they don't give anything for free. Stanislaw, he won G's. Ends up running into his own Molotov after getting lost inside the smoke, and Sonic has got nothing to do to trade. They have gotten a lot of control down towards the lower bomb site, but the bomb is isolated in Friend's hands. He's still outside, and he doesn't have an escort to take him forward. It has to be a play made by the lower players to try and maybe go back to ramp. You can't really go up vents, let's be honest. So that feels like there's only one way that you can actually attack the site. I wonder if they're going to try and be cute here with JBA or not, but I mean... With him down, it's it's going to be hard to activate him without giving away sound cues. Maybe he'll, they'll just wait for those smokes to bloom. But it's just about linking up with the rest of the squad. Sonic is able to transfer over, as is the whole wildcard team ready to pounce on this B bomb site. ID is coming into flank as well, and Dogs' position is not bad at all. He's got the grenade to pop this smoke open, so he'll be able to spot these players deep. out, but it's gone too deep, and Togs even takes some bullets for it. Friend now goes for the plant, and Sonic's found Nidi's flank. He's ready for the second, but Matios will have delayed. Togs still worried about ram presence, and it's Woody to find Sus. Matios adds another to the tally. Sonic turned away at the wrong time, and with Friend now to cover off, he needs to break that egg, and he wants to do it by breaking Woody's head. JBA, however, steals the kills, and they will still be in the round. Both Old players on a sliver of HP, dogs without a kid, and is they want to be picked up? It doesn't feel like it. Time's running low. JB oh. position reveal. Shots being missed, and is he going to commit to it? Jumps up, spots it out, plays it smart, and Togs will lose the round to time, even if it had not been that bullet to take him down. Yeah, I mean, JBA really making a meal of that one. Uh, a one on one where it's not as though Togs was going to, it was anticipating that position either. A very, very uncomfortable clutch, but JBA will deliver. I mean, he got the critical kills that really swung the round, even with Friend serving to delay the ramp pressure. If not for these frags from JBA, the. The whole round was in jeopardy. Wild card, I mean, that's the first proper after plant they've been in, and they did so working off a deficit. Stanislaw <laughs> died without really even contributing much, aside from calling from the grave. Your first death is one of the rifles that you'd taken into this one, but... Yeah, it's a weird buy. The investment is strange. I was actually trying to figure out, this is a full five-man loss bonus, so I'm guessing Woody's has just decided that he doesn't want to prioritize the op, unless Togs is the one dropping yeah, it for it'll him. Yeah, it'll just be something like In that. In which case, I'd rather just seen Togs with the M4. Yeah, that is, that is fair. What are you saying? It's okay, you can just drop me. But I'm, but I'm, the but I'm the best rated player on our team. <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, well, you know, I've, I've always been a big fan of Nidy, and he does dispel a couple oh. towards outside, but he did need some help. That position for Matios was a little deep while Carl were caught off guard. But a missed shot, Nidy, unable to get anything further. Five rounds on the board for Wildcard, despite a couple of hiccups in the middle over there. This is looking very, very smooth. It's a good time in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, also just Good to see some life from Wildcard. Good to see life from, from both of these squads, really. And, you know, right now it is looking as though Wildcard are keeping the cards close to their chest. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a beautiful play. I mean, they, they go for the run boost, they get friend on that box, and it's just an angle that is unanticipated, but he needed the full kill. He got legged back. And now what is it expecting there to be a player up top on the Marshmallow? Will he be able to spot out JBA or not is the question. That challenge is never given. And that's the one to receive it. Wild card. This time, recede backwards. They will not be competing for outside at all beyond that initial pick unless they want to go for a late set of smokes outside. They've certainly got the utility to go for it. 
but the bomb is down, so it does feel like a ramp commitment, and that's exactly what Togs is waiting for. Flash goes over, and Togs will be spotted out, or heard at least. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Sonic happy to commit to it, and the rotations are late from the CTs. They go down to the lower bomb site instead. Fairly similar reaction as to what happened in the pistol, but they got crunched from hell last time over. While Carter not making any sudden moves as of yet, they cluster. And with that Molotov in friend's possession, they do set themselves up for an A-side attack, but the timing for the peak is perfect there for Matios. The Molotov will flush him out, but they're stuck in at that door. They need to look for other avenues, but to lead the way is friend on low health and JBA taken low against us, just keeps on finding these critical kills. And with KS Locks diving those vents, he does emerge oh. and Sus just keeps on finding head after head. Odic, they, need to, they are put on notice. There is a Swede missing from this wildcard roster, but it's not Sus. He's been stunning. Honestly, he has been fantastic. And it's really going to be such an important thing because the other point is obviously wildcard have also got a lot of these inexperienced names susp is on is one of them but just getting him going getting him ready going forward into the tomorrow as well if you are going to win over here it is so important to know who you can bank on in a position like this who you can say stand up and say listen guys don't worry forget about the first game i carry the second game i'm going to do it again tomorrow and right now audic would really love to have a player like that stand up themselves but unfortunately it feels like whatever they've had planned the aggression has stopped. Early round aggression is just not happening over here. Togs was set up for potential success. He feels a bit nervous as well. Shoots out a little bit preemptively. They know where he is. What could have been an overlooked angle into a double kill ends up being a one-for-one -one trade. And from that point onwards, it was just Sus taking control. And it's really all just about the LAN experience. You know, Sus, the guy that hustled, grinded, actually got a very high up with this Metis port as well. But you know, expectations are different when you're the import. But he is delivering on the goods right now for, for wildcard. He's been at the forefront of the action. Stanislaw this time will just catch Nighty probing outside. The flashes are decent, but they're getting crunched. Tox do, taking some pressure away by rotating quickly to hell. And Woody's AWP will also collect another. Bombs on the ground as well. That's the important one. And they're not ready for the push up from Chaos Locks. He picks up Sonic immediately, backs off. Four versus two. And if there was any round to tip your head on his turn, it is this one. Wild card. Looked like it's already lost friend, the only one with HP, and he's going to try and make a gander for it. But with an AWP on the other side, he's peeking into it. He had the right idea, but the man with all the ideas takes him down. Woody. A very big round for Audic to have stolen right back, and it's JBA to deal some damage, but damage is not enough. Yeah, and it's just a patchwork buy from, from the Audic side that they finally find success in. Audic, I mean, with, with Wildcard getting that kill so quickly, considering the temperament that they've displayed in the mid-round by slowing things down, waiting consistently, walking into a lot of their plays, they try and speed things up and maybe catch Audic off guard, ex expecting the, the play to be safer. And, well, I mean, the smokes fade on them at inopportune times. They try and jump through it, and it just it turns out to be the wrong decision. Uh, a real chance for Audic to get something back out of this half. Run boost forward one more time. Sasp is going to find nothing. Woody's taken over the ramp mantle and said it's 90 up top on top of the credit card to get the first. Stannis Law again trying to be the one to lead forward, but it's 90 to double up this time. Susp and Stan both out and Woody is in ramp just waiting for the other prong, the other shoe to drop. Audic are not scared whatsoever about lower pressure. They could have crossed with those smokes. But Audic would rather play the 5 on 3 if Wildcard get a free plant. Timely Molotov in from Woody. He just starts to rotate away and Togs is set up for success. They run through those flames in anticipation, trying to catch them uh, swapping between Util, but just leaves JBA in the dust. And in the wake of Odic salvaging the CT side, some great timing there from Woody. Togs will give him a nice high five, I'm sure.
You'd hope so. This is where, again, one of the fun things about this matchup is how many parallels there are between these teams, right? I mean, we I talked about how Stanislaw is obviously this uh, legacy IGL with a tenure and everything, and Woody hasn't been on the same level, but as far as Brazil itself is concerned, being on the MIBR brand means that you've got yourself some chops, means that you were considered one of the people to potentially replace Fallen and his legacy at the time when he came in, right? So. He's got a very similar pressure on his shoulders and he's got a very similar role in this team. He needs to get everything working when it's all breaking down. And look, this might be what they need to get themselves up to a 6-6, but this is also just a CT side and Wildcard should be content with what they have. Maybe not happy with it considering how early they got it, but 6 is great. I mean, it feels self-explanatory, but you know, the game leader is the brain of the team. You know, it's, it's, true. it's, it's your core identity. That. So much talk about, you know, elite level teams and how they make roster moves and how they change their philosophy. It starts at the in-game leader. And right now the round started with both IGLs as well. One with their hands, the other with maybe a little bit more of the brains, I guess. That's what I think of utility damages, but... <sighs> Sonic just misreading that, that Molotov duration. It's an unfortunate way to go, but this time they will pressure ramp and they'll spot Togs immediately. No quick reinforcements this time over and he'll just get overwhelmed, swarmed. Ramp is open. The Chaos Locks could lock down this B bomb site. Are they committing to it though is the question. They are at least threatening it and yeah, it's going to be a ramp side hit into B and Chaos Locks has gone to order and gets himself the first. Knows where the second is as well. He knows there's a turnaround. He smelled blood in the water and it's only Sus left swimming in it. A one-on-two that's very achievable with the time as it is, but he's hunting for a frag. It's Woody around the corner. It would be a good kill to find. It's an AWP with a pistol in his hand. But he's not gone far enough. Commitment to the bomb plan over here would just guarantee pretty much a loss. Madios and Woody can then put their heads together. But it feels like it's your only option to commit into. Woody continues to trail forward. He's getting closer and closer, and now with 20 seconds left, the bomb's dialed in. He'll have a chance to take this duel initially. The door is opened up. He spots out Woody, but Woody's not missing his shot. Might have been a missed opportunity for Dogs to pick up a multi-kill again, but regardless, it is some good work being done by Woody and KS Rocks. I mean, that rotation towards the lower bomb site, they've been doing that consistently. Anytime there's pressure towards ramp, this player is dropping down the vents and trying to get as far out towards that B bomb site as possible. As soon as uh, Togs is taking that contact, Chaos Locks already is on the move and able to capitalize on, on a wild card that thought they would have a little more time before they'd have to really deal with any of these CTs rotating in. A fantastic time for that particular rotation or protocol to rear its head. And when Chaos Lux was given the opportunity, he did not falter. Already six on this T side. It can feel like enough, but when you hold a lead for as long as you do, it will feel like oh. you should have gotten more. Nighty, a nice opener, but they just build the wall. And JBA able to oh. get a kill back, but Woody can see right past it, and the, the smokes have faded. Ah, uh, that is inopportune. At the very least, Sonic is able to find Chaos Locks, and it's back to a three on three. I believe that might be a recoverable weapon, but that one surely is. Oh, oh my god, he doesn't need one. And now Maddie is all alone, all smiles in that previous round. High fives to be given, but now he needs to give him a straight punch. One on three, that's the first and the bomb with it. And he knows all he needs to do is protect it, but how can he? He doesn't have any information about where Stanislaw is. Could have been coming in on the flank, but it's Sonny to take them to seven. Wildcard will maintain that lead into the second half.
if I met you in the middle, babe, would you give me all your love? Come and meet me in the middle, babe. I might give you all of my heart. If I met you in the middle, babe, would you give me all your love? The first day of ESL Challenger Atlanta, and we are sending a team home right off the rip. This is the first map between Wildcard and Otic, and the team with the stand-in, missing their Swedish star Orper, has the one that is has come out on top. A successful T-side campaign by Stannis Law. It's not over yet, though. They need to do it on CT as well, and they have already conceded control of hell. Over to the Brazilians, KS Locks under DJBA. They both trying to hide away from each other. But first contact's gonna come through for the ramp player, and it's Stannis Law on an angle he's just not used to. Togs to take him down. Such an awkward fight. You know you could be effectively crunched from both sides, but also, like you said, the duel is so unfamiliar at times. This is uh, hardly a comfortable setup here for Wildcard. Even with them having the information about seeded ground, they're going to have to find something back. They do push lobby, but even then, again, these, these duels are not exactly comfortable, and they've got JBA all the meanwhile. This A-bomb site is now open for the taking. And it has indeed been taken over. Sus trying to respond. But it's so little to work with. It feels like Audix already done the job, but Susp is coming in with a little bit of a try at the very least. Friend missing opportunities, but it's going to be... Now Audic just hiding away, turtling in. Sus has got it. Only enough HP to be trade, to be baited out. No! He's getting it done! He's got nothing to work with, and the world on his shoulders, he will carry it! Only Chaos Locks, a one on two. The players without kids, but they need to commit. Chaos Locks wanted to take the deal. He's getting nervous! <laughs> friend takes them down, it's Sosp and Friend to bring it back! I can't believe they've managed to get out of that situation. Sosp on his low health the whole time. You know, after the opening couple of duels, he gets he fights back from Hut, just able to provide so much more. And there were labored gun battles for, for Friend as well. Hell, across the map, it felt like that pistol was incredibly labored. But it is so very difficult for them to get a handle on, on just how well this, this Swedish player is playing so far for a wild card right now. He's been a savior. Yeah, he really has. A driving force. And he doesn't know that there's a brake pedal in this car as well. Look at him go all the way forward, all over again. And well, listen, right now it's Wildcard that are all over Odic. Friend finding those first two kills with a nice cozy flashbang as well. Odic four spot into this round. Let's not forget this is not just a, hey, it's an anti-eco. Yeah, I mean, the amount of damage that's been done, it, it does look like that. But Chaos Lox does show his hand, his forward position. You'll get one, but that's all she wrote for the Otic Force buy. They end up with four rifles in that one as well. That's yeah. basically best case scenario. Thanks for buying these rifles for us. Look, Aiken Galil, this seems pretty nice. Yeah. Thank you very much. And another reason to say thank you very much is the eco round that's around the corner over here as well. And Wildcard, who looked like they might have been letting slip of some of that advantage that they had early on, right? Six, two, seven, five. That's not really the best finish to a half that starts off as splendidly as it did. But right now, the continuation is fantastic. Yeah, Otic will have quite a lot to answer for. You know, when we were looking at these in-game leaders and these teams coming into this event, I actually think, you know, ESL Challenger Atlanta with the, I guess, with the, the projected big favorites we have, there's a lot of open ground that could be taken by, by teams that are on the come up. So for me, I, I always thought, you know, one of these teams, maybe more on the fringe, actually just had a lot to really answer for. That's an unfair statistic. It was a bad game. All right. It was a bad game. Yeah. 
And KS Locks has had his moments over here. That one particular one that allowed them to actually start turning things around on the lower bomb side of Nuke was beautiful. That being said, beauty cannot be ephemeral. It must be a little bit longer lived if you want to win out a map of Counter-Strike. Yeah, getting trophies is, I guess, the biggest thing about this challenger event for basically all of the teams involved. You know, whether or not it's it's players that have come from success or come from, you know, big teams like like Nafani with Cloud9, for example. You know, this t caliber of tournament actually is is out of the cabinet for basically all the teams in attendance. You know, the the only ones that have really touched that silverware, uh, I guess, is is big as an organization. But it's been quite some time, and it's really only, what, Searson... Oh! Matthias has a deagle, man. And Tabson. Yeah, and Matthias does have a deagle. He's very willing to show Wildcard what he's got. Matthias and 90's deagle is actually very impressive. I remember it very fondly. That said, you don't always see it work out, and it's a difficult angle to work with. It is still the anti eagle Wildcard's only job over here is keep as many players alive as possible, and Susp is damn impressive. Just a mechanical display that he keeps on putting up for us here is fantastic. Yeah, I'm sure he's loving the output he's, he's putting on the server himself as well. Now, when did these kills be so free-flowing? Like a bar at tap. Unfortunately, the bar only opened from match number two onwards. Yeah, that fa fair, actually. Very fair. But now it's open! And let's see what they continues forward. Marios, of course, short, cute shot. Very nice to see all that good stuff. But now's really your only chance to bring it back. It's down five to ten. They're already on double digits. They're one gun round away from pretty much securing themselves map point. And yes, this is Wildcard's own map pick, but it's not like Odic themselves are unfamiliar with it. They've played this 19 times in the past few months. Yeah. This is the thing, though, you know, coming over to and playing other regions on on maps that you're very familiar with. I feel I feel Nuke is always a is actually a pretty good example. Mirage is, I guess, the biggest litmus test in terms of like a, a differing uh, version or a different style that you're maybe unfamiliar with. But you know, especially when we look at the South American region, we, in terms of development and even when they they cross those wars and they play American teams. Often we will favor the, the South American squads, given how much they they play against each other and even just the different styles within their own region. JBA hoping to start off with a quick kill on a 90. It's Stanley's low who's taking his litmus and his light away. Triple kill as they're pushing out from behind and all of the hopes of Audic are coming to a close. If this is what that T-side is going to look like. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I mean, these investments are just being dispelled. It's not like Wildcard are particularly stressed in any of these moments. You know, the pistol was the most stressful experience they, I guess, have had so far in the CT side. And then they went 2-1-4, well, 2-1-5. You know, that, that's the type of uh, CS that, I guess, Wildcard are experiencing when things are going wrong. It's not as if it's going so wrong you can't get out of it. Forced by out from Audic, they know they don't really have a choice over here. They need to get something now. And Sonic doesn't want to let that happen. Already past the smokes before they've even bloomed, and he's relying on Audic to be feeling tenuous. They've used all their utility on the T side. The grenade to pop open the smoke and friend to find Woody as well. Sonic is bumping bodies inside the smoke, but he's going to come out on behind them. Will there be Mario shaking it? It will not matter. He's back in the smoke like a ninja, this man is. Sonic finds more before finally being put down. Yeah, I mean, this this actually was just pegged up to be a crazy play from Sonic from the start. Audic using all of their utility to get that cross, and as soon as Friend blew open that smoke, Sonic can simply thrive. Fantastic footwork around the util. Getting fancy. But it's always that first domino that en uh, enables crazy multi-kills, I find. And, you know, without one, there is not the other. Audic are really going to have to pull literal magic off in this round. JBA currently not face-checking the idea that they could have prepped the site, so status law will die, but JBA will just simply trade. And KS locks with that bomb on the lower side of the map, has a one-on-three on his hands. Is there 
were a duel to isolate. Will Wildcard give that up? JBA is accelerating forward and Chaos Locks has moved back into decontamination room. JBA, however, despite having descending down quite quickly, is still going to be slowing down as well. Chaos Locks' position known. He is going to continue the slow creep forward. It's not a great sign, but maybe they're expecting him to be coming in from decon. Still not really sitting out the defuse. Needs to open the door now. Spots them out, but it will not matter. 12 has been found. Wildcard are an inch away from their first win on home ground. Yeah, I mean, really nicely done even in that three versus one. You know, JBA not exactly ha like trying to take that fight independently. He always wanted to relink with his squad. They had Util as well. So the options were incredibly limited in that clutch but, uh, situation. But... You know, all these ideas, all these these AKs and Galils that, that they're buying on the side of Otic, it's just every round is blowing up in their face. And where I was saying, you know, you had the luxury of all these options and all these different ways you could play out the T side if you're a Stanislaw, given the early precedent they set. Otic don't have that. Everything they've tried has failed. Just anything to save face as you move into map two is your goal at this point. Right, Chaos Locks finding that first kill is massive. Gets control over outside and it forces Friend to make a move, but Friend is happy to get his feet going. Four on three. Again, you just don't have utility here on the side of Audix, so you're going to have to try and slide out and hopefully go uncleared, and that's exactly what happens. Good timing for Matios, but they have lost another member all the meanwhile. Friends Orp has really been singing on this CT side. And the man whose voice has never gone down is right here on ramp. Good for one, and honestly, that's all he wanted. A one-on-two is not terrible for Togs. It's honestly one of the best situations Otic has been in on this T side, which is kind of sad to say, but the truth is what it is. Going back to the A side does give him a one-on-one -on -one versus JBA, but JBA is waiting for this exact peak. It will not matter. Death has been delivered and the bomb can be as well. Friend rotating up will have his hands only on the AWP. It's not a great place to be in the singular duel. The flashbang keeps dogs away and Friend is holding down the line. Wildcard will get it done. They will find 13. They will break first blood as we head into that second map. They'll have a chance of finishing too. that first but that may be the last memory they hold Otic will try and answer back on their own pick ancient what they are hoping will keep them alive here in the lower bracket it's an incredibly well programmed map for them they know exactly what they want to do on their t side and right now they're starting things off with the b side hit but look at what wildcard have planned it's a double push forward from cheetah and friends already got the first that's more than what you could have really asked for given that he's blind peeking out of smoke starts taken down and that's raid boss over stanley's law just the boss Maybe not so much for a raid. Has also been taken down. So despite the early advantage, it's going to be a three on four for wildcard. Friend will try, but he's making steps over towards long. It's attention's raised that direction, but the duelies of Sonic get empty, uh, end up empty handed. And with Friend starting the affair, he hopes to get at least a couple more, but Onik crack through that B bomb site and they convert on this pistol. We really did need more from Susp over there, right? He's set up for success completely. Yeah. They've used their utility, they've used their flashes. You've got the first kill via Friend. He's also a threat to push through the smoke theoretically. If you can't find that first frag, you're just not going to get anything done. Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe as well, it's it's one of these positions where you're not sure whether or not to, to try and support Sus by by making that play through the smoke or or leave him to his own devices. I mean, when they've left Sus, Sus to do his work on that previous map, it's not like he didn't deliver. But unable to get his hands on those goods. I love that we're diving into an Ancient straight after that nuke, which was a little slow and a little bit more sporadic. We're going to see a lot faster fighting, especially from a team like Audic that love to take space quickly. And here against these pistols, they are venturing into many domains. Just to get information in some of these picks, they do lose Nighty for the chance at that. But they know that those weapons cannot, or that weapon cannot be recovered. It's not like it will be 
a house of cards to fall. Friends trying to move in from behind the smoke. He has a chance, but he's not able to make good use of it. A very hard shot to miss. Uh, to, to, to land, rather. Don't get me wrong. But it did feel like that was really your only opportunity to cause a bit more chaos. They will have to settle with just the one frag, and Sus will be just another casualty. Have to make sure that they don't get ahead of themselves, though. This is how they started off on Nuke. Yeah. Win a pistol. The follow-up. And then suddenly guns come out and life gets difficult. Oopsies. Don't want any oopsies here. Just want some smooth sailing for Audic. Make it a map number three. But this is where the first real hiccups begin. And can you actually quench your thirst fast enough to stop them? Not any aggression out in middle. It's going to, in fact, be Cheetah focused one more time, but blocked off by a Molotov and a MAC-10. I think it's as well. It's an area that they should be targeting. Stanislaw has a lot on his plate as that Cheetah player. And just by threatening that control, it becomes harder for Stanislaw to get a read on the map as, as this player that wants to get active and hunt for information. Sus is moved down the ramp, and as that smoke fades, he gets one and dinks up 90 as well. Big. Salazar, oh, good for the one, make it two! MP9 picking up more than what it's worth, friend as well on the other side. Good for the single, and 90 who's been low. Since Suspect put him a little bit more miserable, will end up falling. Bomb not planted either. Odic will not be able to take that extra ka forward. Yeah, 90 had to plant in that position as well, fearful of the spam from Stanislaw, but JBA. Really nice for that he spams the other side of that, that wooden pallet. The site is pretty permeable in terms of den uh, denying the bomb plant so long as you maintain cave control. So a good read on what the options were for 90. That's it. Get onto the gun round and wildcard are right back into it. Odic coming in with a deagle on Matios, but AKs for the rest of the squad. Woody is playing with fire and death, but he's also delivering it. Friend trains elsewhere. KS Locks try to get aggressive in the middle. It's not necessarily something you characterize for him. Nighty finds sus, big kill, and well, big kills going both ways. Box is generally one of the biggest performers in late rounds for Audix side. Friend boost past the smoke, another Molotov, and Nighty will be eliminated. Yeah, I mean, fantastic move there from Friend uh, for him to have found a pick, you know, as they were going for this B-side attack, as well as to make use of the Molotov that was already down and, and get that follow-up by his teammate. Often moving past that CT smoke, it's it, the biggest vulnerability you, you have is, to, is getting peaked long as you're emerging from the smoke. Woody has given himself access of the bomb again, and with plenty of time, there's a threat of rotation so wild card never will feel safe just sitting on their laurels. Picked up another smoke as well. Use this smoke just to make sure you could get control of ramp. And you can see wild card are still kind of hedging their bets. They're unsure about whether Woody will reposition drastically after retrieving that package. Time's running low now, though. And the threat of A will not really have been considered too much by wildcard sonic said you know what as long as it's not being flanked in from ct i'm okay if it gets planted as well 10 seconds and jbe has started to gravitate back towards the bomb site and the second it starts being dialed in jbe will also be doing the same does actually reveal position that gives woody a little bit more information to play with remember his hp is low from earlier on They've got a grenade for the smoke as well if they want to risk it, but JBA decides I'm gonna double peek and double swing. Woody will be given the ice of fight versus Sonic. Sonic, however, just wins it. Yeah, I mean, if Woody had maybe a little bit more health to trade in that duel, there was certainly a chance he could have brought it to that one versus one, but you can see Wildcard were fearful of giving him isolated duels, even with that smoke that was down, even with having HEs, they didn't want to get timinged by awkward moves by Woody in that situation. In-game leader of Audic trying his best to make that round feasible, but Wildcard weren't going to tr make a, a boisterous error just to get him off of that plant or even just, you know, there was no ego, I guess, to, to, yeah. to hunt down this final kill. It was all about trying to play off, off each other and guarantee that trade. 
It's going to be the nades down middle. JBA's been double naded up himself, and Nihil, although there's very little HP left on JBA, there's still enough meat to have a meal with. I want to finish off this kill. Stanislaw is there to cover, and nice. that's a perfect angle to support JBA's ascent through the ledge. And even JBA taking wow. the next fight. I think he was setting up for Stanislaw to trade, but finally. he's found success. Yes, yeah, the Glock of Matias that finally finishes the job. One of the things to keep in mind, though, is that Odic has actually been juggling around some of their position on the T side, right? Uh, this round's a foregone conclusion, but looking over towards the gun rounds again, I'm curious to see whether Togs and Chaos Locks will be playing together in middle more often. Togs, earlier on, they were trying to have him play the B extremities a little bit more often and keep him alive for late round. Chaos Locks would also not get aggressive in mid, funnily enough, even though he was playing it. He would rather actually reverse back and get aggressive with a death ball for the rest of the team, but it feels like Odic might have tried side for Ancient. Maybe expecting it to be read into, maybe already feeling like it was insufficient at places. Mm -hmm. And you have to love the, the approach, though, from JBA in that round, even if it gets double naded down to 5 HP, instead of thinking, oh, I'm low health, yeah. I should play it a little safer. It's it's kind of, well, I'm already all the way out here. I may as well give it a look. And <laughs> he finds two kills from his 5 health. The plan it, is the plan. Yeah. Don't deviate from it. And he is rewarded. I think as well, when we're talking about, you know, prospects in the region, there's a lot of talk about JBA as, you know, a young up and coming kind of star player within the region. And given the way this, uh, the campaign here at ESL Challenger Atlanta started for, for Wildcard, nice that he's got that confident stride into him. Absolutely. A lot of people out in the audience, I'm sure, do really want to see him succeed. And a lot of people back at home do as well. But a creep and crawl forward from Audic into Donut means that it's going to be JBA put to the test one more time. An early incendiary will singe no one. And a deep grenade will be doing very little as well. Woody, a single point of HP chipped away. That's not exactly value. Yeah, the problem for Audic is that they don't just want to attack A simply from Donut. It'll just be too difficult as well with the possibility of A main being explored by wild card. So after they show that presence, they start to move away Rerouting through red. Sonic knows. Knows what's going on. He shot him a bit too quickly, but it doesn't matter. Position revealed or not, Sonic will win nonetheless. It's in fact friends off that ends up being sacrificed. Chaos Locks will be able to put the bomb within arm's reach, but as he turns back to the B bomb site, he's not ready for the duel. Stalin's Law takes him down. Yeah, I really thought Sonic was going to be caught shadow boxing, but the reason they do that is to prepare for the real fight. Sonic able to get those two kills, just immediately shutting down that reroute that Odic had planned. Feeling good about himself right now. And Sonic Souls is one of those players who obviously he 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 has such a strange level of veterans when you look over towards his resume. Yeah. When you look over towards who he's played with, who he's played for. Does end up being a bit of a forgotten veteran in the NA scene, but he wants to be remembered. And right now he's gonna be remembered for some easy frags down middle and a fadeaway with a limping foot. Yeah, I actually can't believe he escaped. I mean, there are Tech Nines running him down. They've, there's enough bullets in those Tech Nines usually to, to hound down that kill. 15 health will be enough. Nice double setup inside of Cave. They get Friend involved. And as much as Stanislaw is the, the man to look to inside of Cheetah, just having that extra support can be a nice way to alleviate the strain, especially when they know they're on lo a low buy. This is like the third time he's actually called for this as well. Now, Friend is making his way back over. He's very cognizant that they could already be in the bomb site, and that's the adjustment he's looking for. But Stana has now called, I think, thrice for someone to come with him to Cheetah. He's expecting to be targeted. He's expecting that they're going to say, well, this guy's the weak link. Well, I think it's probably because of how some of the early rounds started. You know, Matteo's getting so aggressive with the SMG, the, the deep Molotovs as well. So for them, if there's if there's a lack of that presence or a lack of that pressure, it actually might just be a vulnerability that could be explored in the late round, if not a chance to shoot some Ts just walking into their yeah. crosshairs. That helps. Early Nate's gonna do some good damage. No, I'm lying through my teeth. Thought that one would go deeper. Oh, this is weird. Yeah, friend going for that deep pick oh. and 90 just 
perusing the edge of the smoke. This is the problem. Stanislaw could not protect that ledge position. That feels bad for Sonic. He does at least get a dink out, but you can't do anything when 90's on the other side with an AK. Suspa's got one of his own, but there's so many players to deal with. They're turning He's around. Forward. He's going to find the timing, but it's not the kills. Manio's able to recover, and he recovers with two. That's fantastic. I mean, they're just going to accelerate immediately off of that. That's finally finishing off that kill that Sonic teed up, and Stanislaw gets two. Even having support, he'll be teed up for a third. This in-game leader is fighting back, but it's now a clutch offered up. A one-on-one -on -one KS locks. There is no info on where this player was. Stanislaw is going to have to try and take something at some point. He knows he has to bomb at his feet. Oh, he's backed off. This is perfect. The problem is going to be his read of force, but... At the same time, for Chaos Locks, he, he, he's dealing with a ghost right now. Stan could have feasibly come in from behind, but the reload gives away the gig. The game's been spotted, and so as Stan and his teammates keep giving him the call, I think you saw him, and now he knows the bomb is being planted. Stan's in pursuit. Chaos Locks cannot peek out. He also has no idea what... How Stan shows it, and he just <laughs> stays patiently. Veterancy at its finest, four kills for Stan. And look at this, the way that this in-game leader has started. 12 and 3 on status floor right now. Sure, he gets four this round, but it's not as though he's not fighting success in some of the other buys. The weak link? Who? <laughs> This is the thing, Stan was actually famous for being one of the players in North America who when he turned out towards IGLing, he did have these maps where he popped off, right? He's one of the classic quote-unquote fragging IGLs. It's one of the reasons why their teams always felt like they had a good match of us Astralis as well, right? You're looking back towards uh, Stan's teams would always do well because Glaive felt like he was sort of an extra man compared to what every other team had at the time. Stan could actually rival it very effectively, both with the calling and with the fragging. Yeah, and maybe in, in the past few years, that, that hasn't really been his his acclaim, but I mean, uh, the big thing you get an in-game leader for is the brain. If they can get some extra kills alongside it, that is a luxury. That's a luxury they're very happy to have. Yeah, and Stan, Stan is living lavish on that round. Oh, oh, oh dear, to get oh, no. over here, but no! Sonic turns on him. He wasn't blinded because he panics and tries to run away. <laughs> Even when it's going wrong, it's still somehow working. Right. It's it's still okay for a wild card. Sus Ooh. inside of Cave did need to provide something. I mean, Stan has a forward position outside of Cheetah. But Onik do have the sight, and you know, given the way this round started, fumbled moves. And, you know, especially with that last round coming down to a one-on-one, -on -one, Money is not in the healthiest position here for, for Wildcard and a few of their players. And so, you know, given the way the round starts, they'll simply say, listen, we made a couple mistakes. Audit can take this one. I'm not one to draw conclusions. But this does look a lot like Nuke right now. 6-2. They start to bring it back. 6-3. Maybe looking at 7-5. Let's hope the trends aren't too clear-cut, but still. And listen, the one advantage you are going to have is I think Stan's performance is a lot less sustainable than Susp's one. Sure. Right? And Susp has not shown up to this map. He's 3-7 and seven so far, and that's not for lack of opportunity to frack. Yeah, I mean, they've been attacking the B-bomb site fairly uh, frequently, and he serves as, uh, I guess, the, 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 the proper anchor. You know, Ancient's a bit of a weird one where the yeah. B-bomb site kind of has two anchors, so long as the Cheetah player isn't sort of pushed away from Cave too far. Suspus is the guy that will be last to rotate very frequently, and yeah, the, the B-bomb side has seen Siege. But yeah, just taking the time, I think, to, to screw their heads on straight, like you, you're sort of aptly describing the, the parity between this map and Nuke in terms of the scoreline. <laughs> They're just making sure that it doesn't fall out of their favor it's definitely a conversation to be having both for Wildcard and Odic, right? Because because of how often Wildcard's been concentrating their double cheater setup, Odic gets a great call over here where they not just get the kill, but they accelerate into the site. They recognize what's been going on, and now it's a change-up. It looks like Fast A is the call, but that smoke's going to be slightly slow. At least maybe it just feels like it. It's gone out to the back of Donuts. Sonic's found the first. JBA is right here with a flash to his name as well. And Sonic's just adding more to his tally. 
Five on two, and Odic's goal has been thwarted faster than it was even dialed in. Yeah, it's it's crazy as well, because you see so many games from Wildcard where they're just so aggressively pounding in towards the, the middle of the map. And, you know, this time JBA is starting close towards Dota. He's there to respond. He gets that Molotov down in time, and you think he's going to get all the kills. But yeah, Sonic providing a lot of help. But the round's not finished as of yet. Woody left alone, 90 taken down after alleviating some strain, but Susp just keeps applying that pressure back into the site, and Woody is ill-prepared. That's Seven it. found a little bit earlier than it was on Nuke, and I have to say, if this is what Wildcard are going to look like, I am here for it. Yeah, and, you know, for them, they, they said it. Forget about that first game. This is our first game properly at ESL Challenger Atlanta. They get a best of three, and so far looking very good. I mean, that's a great round from JBA, just in the way that he reacted yeah. and called for Sonic support. The boost up from Audic, but they find nothing. They've been disassembled and it's been heard inside the smoke. Sonic's given the call. Be careful, we know where one of them is at the very least. Susp traded, JBA the one to commit to it. And with Friend repositioning back for a peek in with the AWP, he has been found 90, the one to put him to bed. But the three on four is still very concentrated. Another duel in mid from Sonic, <laughs> but it's 90 to continue to succeed on this B site. He just brute forced it. He genuinely just brute forced it. He runs up ramp, finds an opener, and just keeps on finding frags. Uh, 90 was done with all of the tactical misdirection of these fast calls. He just decides he's going to take the duels himself, and he rips their heads. Sometimes it can be as simple as that. And this is why, you know, even when we were talking about Nuke, we were looking at Nidhi as the guy that is supposed to be uh, effectively a playmaker. When things are going poorly, this guy does take ownership on rounds. He does try and drive some initiative for this team. And that round is just fully accredited to him. And we talked about in the first map how we didn't have a player to look towards to take ownership like that. If Nidhi will beat the man, I'm all here for it. But. Woody's the one who starts off this round again with the kill on the sus. The continual problems in the B site for sus do continue, but Woody is the real problem. <laughs> All right, Nighty had his turn. Is it Woody's time to shine? I mean, those are great picks. A Molotov as well that He's will going. flush Stanislaw forward. Woody will know that he should have a simpler duel ahead of him, oh and he actually hits the flick instantly. Sonic, though, in the cubby, a double, but JBA cut down on the rotate. It does end similarly to Nuke, 7-5 to five at the half. Odic fighting for their lot.
Individuals will give you a chance, and that chance has been found. Woody and Nighty fighting for Audic's fifth, but can they fight for more? This is where Audic found themselves cut to a stop on Nuke, but now they will have to defend a fast A side push from Wildcard, who look to close it out in this half. Madios starts off with his teammate already down. Togs hits the deck, and Madios retreats. And just as the first pistol started, it's Friend that finds that opener, and they even get Woody as well in transition. Madios being that low health will not help them in this retake. Wildcard are just continuing to find player after player. This fast call to A, the immediate smoke they get down towards CT. It's just too much for Onik to handle. And just as it was a struggle for Wildcard on the retake, the numbers that the Wildcard still have available, it will just be too much for Lox and Matios to deliver on. And it'll be as simple as that. It's all on the entries and that snap decision from Spawn to just go with that fast A call. Wildcard. I mean, it's actually both teams that win their T-side pistols, but Wildcard do it in a much more convincing fashion. Mm -hmm. The thing over here to keep in mind as well is, right, I mean, I talked about how Stan's performance isn't really sustainable. Maybe Sonic also doing a little bit too well for what his role theoretically is. But I would also say that Susp's sort of underperformance shouldn't be sustained either, right? I never expect him to be gone for that long in a game, to be out for an entire map. And the T-Sign is a perfect chance to flip it around. He set him up for a couple of anti-eco kills over here right back into and things. And to be honest, I mean, most of the success we saw from Sus was when he was being aggressive, you know, yeah. not so much sitting static in positions like he was often having to do on that CT side, you know, reacting to, to what Otic were throwing down. So yeah, I am, I am expecting a bit of a Swedish bounce back. At the same time, what I'd love to see for Otic, though, is Togs to come in and perform. Togs is such an incredibly important part of this team. Yeah, and really struggling so far. It's not just about his aim, it's also about the fact that a lot of their mid-aggression comes off the back of calls that Togs is clearly making. Togs and KS Locks will come through together, and if both of them aren't doing well, if you're going to be struggling on Middle and Ancient, you're going to be struggling on all of it. Once again, an appreciable amount of respect given over to Odic on this low buy. You know, it could be a force in which they are stacked. But I'll have you know, Wildcard are very much at their computers. Okay, guys, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, the desk may not be there, but Wildcard certainly are. But they do lose a couple of players, even though they take a free bomb site. Again, it's it's really about limiting the amount of, I guess, opportunity you give Odic to I guess, break your money as you move further into this half, but. Even Susp, you know, you're talking about setting him up for some anti-ecos. Well, I might have, I might have jinxed him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't doesn't even land a bullet with that Mac. Gun being retrieved over here as well, and JBA <laughs> might be losing another one. That is disaster. In fact, that is really the worst case scenario. Uh, is no one going to go back for that Galil that they dropped? Oh, well, they're going to try and jump up as fast as they can to retrieve it. Uh, that, bo that bomb rate is, especially when you don't have armor, <laughs> you know, Ancient has to be respected for that. I think Nighty just didn't drop the gun towards his teammates, unfortunately, as well, so that 
that's never going to be good. Regardless, you, you get away with an AK saved and a lot of damage dealt. You now have a chance to reset the economy for the T side, which is very rare on the CT side this early into a half. If there's ever a, a, if there's ever really a sign for you to say, okay, we can make this work, we can start to come back, this would be yeah. it. I mean, you can see it on Stanislaw's face. I mean, just the fact that they, they lose uh, so many players for that. You're having to come into this round with so many Galils and uh, laps of util, but yeah, Togs trying to take that mid space. It's Sonic that finds him. Great flash is thrown from spawn. This is what I meant. If you're going to be losing out, mate, you're losing out so much. Sonic, though, loses his life, and Nighty is happy to deliver death twice over. Thank you so much for that AK, huh? I mean, just fast headshots. And with the M4, that would have been a lot more taxing to perform. So, like, Wildcard were poorly spaced for it. Just Nighty some clean shooting. He's had that all game long now. 17 frags. Locks will be running, gunning it. Trying to get himself in a better position. He at least gives himself a chance to be defended by 90. 90 off angle is not enough. Sus puts him down and Sus isn't <laughs> done yet. <laughs> there he is. It took him a while, but there is Sus right back into it. I mean, fantastic kills. It's Woody that comes in on the flank and oh, I think he just gave up one too many steps. Stanislaw within earshot. And so he'll have Woody as he starts to emerge from these B doors. It is just purely punched in. Even with the success of Nidi, his misstep in trying his best to reinforce Cheetah, he actually, I don't think he planned to get into that off angle, but he knew he just got there a little too late and offering as many fights as they did. I mean, to be honest, it's just such an awkward rotation coming out from Locks over there, right? The fact that he's coming in from middle into Cheetah once again, that late when you're in a 4 and 3 advantage, like, what are you looking for? Yeah. Are you hoping that Nighty can then come over? The smoke's going to last longer than it will, and you can double peek out of it? That makes no sense. And, it, and it's something I know I talked to you about, but it felt like Save a Buddy Syndrome, where yeah. because of that misstep, everybody felt like they had to do something to help in some way, and it ends up going from bad to worse. Worse is the right way of putting it right now, but 90 and KS Locks will at least make things possible one more time. Audic have shown how deadly they can be on low buys, and listen, this is where, as much as I said, the previous round was the best chance to turn things around. This would be the second best. To be fair, when you're saying they looked good on low buys, the last time they <laughs> got a lot of kills, they didn't even have a buy. That's the lowest buy of them all. Yeah, the one you're given for free. Regardless of how this series goes, all card will look at these rounds and think they should have done a much better job. Still ways to recover it. Sonic, nice wide swing, had the shoulder to shoulder play as they emerge through mid, but unable to get anything further from it. Mario's sitting inside of the smoke as well, and he'll wait for contact. As soon as Tox fires a bullet, no, he actually just emerges the smoke himself. That's insane. I can't believe he's done that. Nighty needs to save it again, and he's just not going to be able to do it. It's a three on five. It's a three on five where you even get the first kill to make it a two on four. Every single domino was set up for your success. All you had to do was tip it over. That's all. But you tripped, you fell, your nose broke. And now you're hoping that Woody's got a medic in his pocket. This is another man advantage seated. This was a three on five. And then a two on four. Yeah. You just push the smoke. It's bold. But it did not work. I think it has really become evident. I mean, even towards the end of that T side half, Odic were desperate in quite a few ways. Whether it's Nighty taking responsibility and just running up ramp or, or Woody and his continued activity with that AWP. But here on CT, when they're when they're in that five on three, they don't know where when to let go. And Sonic and Stan as well have continued to have success over here really have to credit them so much for that. Again, the most veteran players yes. on this team. And yes, there's going to be people saying, well, they're unbounded by pressure. They've got to stand in this. I can guarantee you those two have pressure on their shoulders. Because how many more lands are you going to get in your career? International lands, lands with prestige, lands where you get to go up against top European opposition, lands where you get to prove yourself. Friend, he's just happy to be here and he's happy to be having a good time. 
especially on Nuke when he just started to, to light up. No one wants to come into Atlanta and fall flat. But this man that you place so much importance on Togs, it has been a flat delivery so far. And it's looking like he may be pressured, especially with Sus being found on the extremity like that. Wildcard will have lost all possibility of routing back to B. The rotations into A are guaranteed and Togs will find number three. Deep Molotov as well should be keeping JBA away. He's just looking for a duel anywhere at all that he can find it, but no. Will not be the case. Yeah, good move here to go for the reboost as well. They do it silently. You see, JBA was hunting to see if they jump on the sign. It's really not that a lot that the wildcard can do aside from hope that a duel is given to them and that has happened in similar situations like this. But there's no smokes to push through right now for the CT side, so maybe it's a little bit less hard. GBA is still really honed in on this angle. If, if Chaos Lox steps a little too far, yeah, feet shown. They know exactly where Chaos Lox is. They'll have maybe been close enough to have heard it, but Woody is found elsewhere. JBA trying to reroute wildcard. They called this round off at the 25 second mark. They were really hoping to save the AWP, but unfortunately just not able to do so. If you take that one forward, maybe there's still a play to try and put together, but your money is terrible right now. A force buy is pretty much mandatory. And as much as there realistically are rays of hope and rays of light that I do see, right? You force by over here, you probably lose that one. Maybe you're on an eco afterwards. It's 11 to 8, right? There's, there's these cases I can make. But to be honest, Michael, after that 5 on 3, I need to see Audic convince me rather than the other way around. Yeah, and that was a great display of what they, what they can do in a 5 versus yeah. 3, where they play with a little bit more control and they're constantly keeping tabs on areas. They're not over-rotating. They hear a Molotov in middle. They're not leaping at the opportunity to catch a player out when they already have this significant advantage. It's maybe what they should have done in the previous five on three, but they, they learned their lesson quick. And I think you could see Stan was maybe preying on the idea that, don't worry guys, they'll make a mistake, but Audic didn't oblige. The call is straightforward, the site is A, and the plan is simple. Go in, get some kills. Dogs in the same position, no! Doesn't want to let that happen. Friend will finally trade, but Chaos Rocks has been given plenty of time to come back in. The smoke in the middle of the bomb site is creating so much chaos. But deep nades opening in the smoke. Sonic takes advantage of it. Can look to plant the bomb despite the advantage. It's a three on three. And the smoke dissipating for the CTs. More trades coming in. Yeah, they didn't feel comfortable to get that bomb down because they knew that donut smoke was going to fade. Sonic already rerouting, but Sus didn't quite get the memo. Hanging around and seeing if there were still players around on the side of Odic. It's Sonic that will make a very, very lengthy rotation towards this B bomb site that is open for, for the taking. And given the way that Sonic has been playing this map, currently 20 and 9, he is hoping to find two more to find wildcard at map and series point. If there was anyone to do it, it would be him. It would be the South African man. He knows he's got the clock to play with. Maybe he doesn't expect Otic to have given as much ground as this. You know, he's, he's cut sound. They don't have information on him whatsoever. But Woody is not moving a muscle, keeping his eyes on the prize at red. That prize is mobile though, as Sonic could still come in from the side and just tap him out. Woody should start to think about it though. It doesn't matter, it's a little bit too late, but Sonic is what? also gonna misread it. Back to the B-bomb side, he needs to go, he needs to realize this. He thinks about it. Well, if Woody's watching Red Room, then surely he's not worried about an A-side push. That means there has to be someone on A. Bomb now planted. Could be a quad kill for Sonic. Stanislaw's already found one in similar circumstances. Matios now hoping to hunt him down. So far, success for Audic has largely been in the hands of Nighty, but maybe those aren't the only hands that can show stability. Sonic holds off the off angle. 
Waits for the push to come oh. through and he loses it out. Marius will buy them just a little bit more breathing room. Yeah, I mean, Marius plays that very slowly. The fact he had a smoke as well, I thought was going to be his biggest friend, but just the, the timing on that for Sonic, he just wanted to make sure that he could uh, even maybe catch out Marius thoroughly clearing all these angles. But just as Marius is prepared for that cave fight, that's where Sonic decides to swing. It is... I mean, it actually couldn't have been timed better for Marius. That said, the amount of damage they did just deal to the CT side is not exactly reassuring. Yeah. It if Sasp hadn't gone down over there without getting a single kill, right? That that's different. But now again, fast play into B Tech Nines to overrun Sonic every single round. It feels like he's always good for one. And now with a bomb that's being planted with sprays coming in, they can't get it down. But JBA brings down Madios instead. Three on three, sure. But Chaos Locks and Dogs are back in the site and they are letting this one look a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, really nice job there from Chaos Locks as well. Playing ahead of the utility and just making sure the players couldn't jump into that smoke. They they just prevent an AK to fall, from falling into the hands of Wildcard while all the util is still up. So even if that first kill is seeded, it's not as though Odic made any grand mistakes in defense of this bomb site. They got the players there, and they were willing to fight for each other as well in defense of long and short control. And this is the part where you do kind of start to think about the worst case scenario if you're on the American side, the North American side. Guys, got to win this one. This is the important one. And you start putting on pressure. You start putting more things on your own shoulders. That's how things can go wrong. And I'm sure Wildcard know it as well. But the fact is, this could be the pivotal round to decide the fate of Ancient here and now. And it will be Wildcard looking to try and go for a late mid take contestant to Woody's orb again and Woody's been able to ring off a few shots one of them finding blood but Chaos Locks will lose his own head yeah it's a great shot from Sonic took a lot of damage for it but it will just plaster Chaos Locks against the wall Woody uh, again just re-peeking out from Donut and Togs finds his as well just re-aggressing through mid B bomb site does have some space taken but the bomb needs to cross, and given the activity of Odic in middle, this will not feel safe for JBA, friend. A nice kill through spawn. Nighty starts to gravitate over, and given the low health on friend, it was never going to be favorable. But JBA at least has info on where this B player is. He's a man who's been touted by many of his domestic scene, many of the talents from there as being a clutcher. And right now, it does feel like Wildcard kind of needed these past few rounds have all been so close, but the finishing stamp has always been bearing Odic's logo. Deep Molotov will at the very least let him back into the site, but he doesn't know the night he's rotated all the way out from B ramp back to the side to take him down. Yeah, that was always going to be his, his biggest issue. Last seen, you know, close towards cave or the site, and given how much room he had, wouldn't have expected Nighty to, to find this timing behind him. These repeats from Woody have just been deadly, though. Yeah. I will say that's a great risk to put yourself in. You're taking in the shoes of what before Trogs was kind of struggling with. Like, let's be honest about it. And it did feel like Wildcard is trying to target that late mid play to try and find Chaos Rocks and Togs. They weren't ready for the op. And it now felt, it felt as though as well Woody was kind of stepping out of his comfort zone as yeah. uh, just to make sure, you know, ninety. We'll, we'll hear all the, the presence and, and know that there are players on ledge. And so when he took that gamble and it's perfect, we are starting to see that resurgence here from Togs. Came into this half with two kills, but has been able to deliver on a couple of occasions for multi-frags. Starting to get his confidence back. And that is fearful for the Americans. I don't feel like I need to specify North Americans when you know, we're talking about, about Swedes and South Africans. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, I mean, we talked obviously about how Sonic and Stan are these two veterans who know how, how to change things up, who really have seen it all. You can't kind of say the same for Nighty and Woody as well at this point. Sus, nice shot. 
This round might still have a bit more conversation to be had about it. Chaos Lock certainly being low as the only rotator who's close to the side itself is risky. JBA, a body shot could be enough, but he's not really making any secrets about it. More worried about a push through the smoke than what could come through Temple. That push does come in, and Madios shows them why they were worried. Madios, with all three, shuts it all down. Yeah, all just the confidence of a flash, even if those players weren't fully caught by it, just able to, to get so much space out through spawn and collect on these players that predominantly had pistols. Some nice shooting from Madios. Some nice smiling afterwards as well. Audic are really looking like they are right back in it. I know which way the wind is blowing and it feels southern. And the scary thing is, right, no one ever questioned ability to frag. They question ability to show up and right now Audic has done just that. But Trey's in middle did not go their favor, not this time. Woody will try to rectify with 90 on his side. But the problem is they've left the B-bomb set completely open. Oh. And nighty has been caught as well. Sus finds him. And right when Odic was knocking on the door of equality. Of 11-11. The door was opened up and they broke their nose on Yeah, Wildcard decided to remind them of the difference. I mean, that fast play through mid. And the, the way back in was Nighty getting a kill on JBA. Who, who didn't feel as though he was going to get much coverage from that ledge aggression out from Cheetah. But very timely from Susp. Save JBA's life and save the prospects of this round, I think, as well. Do you go hunting is the question. You really don't have the best money, but yeah. to be fair, you also will have a buy in the next round. And I'm not sure how much it makes a difference there. That being said, though, decent money on the CT side as well, right? It does feel like you want to take the AWP out of their hands, and that's very hard to do. I, I think even from their perspective, though, given the the, the run that Audic have, have been able to pull together, they may think they just might be able to buy anyway. Right. And so the value in it, 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 it doesn't... I guess you, you don't see the you, yourself reaping the rewards. It's not as clearly visible to yeah. you immediately, right? It's... it's Plus, let's be honest, the other thing to keep in mind is, for especially for a younger team, having a conversation about the next round is also very useful, right? Those extra 10, 15 seconds to just chill out and make sure everything's working. It's a good time. It's basically a nice little fake timeout for yourselves. Also, your economy is far more important, given that you are right about to close the series. But can you close it? Audic, this is elimination point for them. Do they want to change things up? Do they want to go aggressive? It does feel like it might be planned with a double man set up inside Cheetah. This has not been as much of a priority for them as it was for the wildcard side. 90. Out in the open, begging for a duel. But instead, he's been given a smoke to cordon it off. The grenade at his feet is not really helpful. He's done well to not take really much damage given the util that surrounded him. So where Audic were desperate, they got individual plays. Can you look at Nighty to be that guy right now when you're fighting for your life? Your first day at the tournament here at ESL Challenger Atlanta. It's a lot of responsibility where others have shied away on this Brazilian roster. There are few that you can look to to be your star man. But the time is running out for Wildcard. A 90. Every second that crosses, it's another chance for him to get it done. But the chances are gone. The dink for dink and Sus comes out on top. Marios though and Woody are able to keep it competitive. The B-bomb side still reinforced by a leader. A leader now with his head removed. Wildcard, two kills away from their first win on stage, and Sonic wants to deliver them, but with the smoke in his hand, he needs to be careful. Locks back in the sight, backs off to the smoke as well. Sonic to trade, only Togs remains. He wants to find salvation, but instead he finds death. A fantastic row of performance and confidence built here by Wildcard. You know, these opening rounds in groups, teams were embarrassed with how poorly they played. We had a nice back and forth here on Ancient. We had Star step up. We had great performances from Woody, from Nighty that tried to keep them in it. And even with Sus... Oh.